good. I'm good, you know. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Good to see you. Yeah. I need to get one of these jackets, man. <laughs> Can I get one of these jackets, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's stepping out? Today we're here at the Rep Theatre and we're doing a celebration of the Shifting Nadal event. So it's been a three year project that's been running that's been focusing on the mental resilience and the mental health and well-being of young black men. We've been engaging young black males from the age of 16 to 25 and we've been having monthly forums where we've basically been doing some unpacking. We've been looking at their lifestyles, we've been looking at some of the circumstances, we've been looking at some of the traumas or any elements that basically have impacted their lives and giving them the opportunity just to share, to be open. But I just want to extend a huge thank you to the partners that we've worked on this project with. It's been a true collaboration. The REP, um, Centre for Mental Health, First Class. And I just want to thank all of you for the way that we've worked in a spirit that I think has been a really open and generous and collaborative spirit. One of the most profound techniques that we use is just creating a cultural competent space and, and a psychologically informed space. So this is just allowing, well, first and foremost, understanding the intersectionality of this young man. So where have they come from? Um, are they from the Caribbean? Are they from Africa? How can we create a space that feels like home to them and that will allow them to connect and open up? So that is one of the key things. And then I guess just having trauma-informed approaches. So we recognise that a lot of young men um, it says 73% of men go missing. That's on a global um, um, perspective. So how can we um, kind of understand the reasons why these men want to go missing? Is it trauma from their childhood? And then how do we address that in a way that's safe for them? To start off, uh, being a participant to now being a leader, uh, working with guys that was like myself in the same uh, place as myself, not really knowing about purpose, not really knowing about uh, the direction where life is like life is taking us. And even in regards to manhood, these false, as I said before, these false concepts and ideologies that we all carry as men um, kind of got destroyed. And now, now that I know them and I'm building on them, I'm going to teach the same for the young men coming under me as well. What well, a privilege to get a role working on a project such as Shifting the Dial, which I have no idea would change me in the way it has. On behalf of Centre for Mental Health, I really want to thank the projects from the bottom of our heart. We learned so much through this um, evaluation and we're really excited um, to share the final with you. This report reiterated to me how many people who've been racialised, especially young people, felt and feel about how white presenting people reacted to the murder of George Floyd. It made me more acutely aware than ever what schools and what the school system is not doing for a large proportion of young people. Black Lives Matter is a movement, but for many, for many schools, it was a moment. It highlighted just how little of the curriculum is dedicated to diversity and diverse role models. And one of the things that struck me uh, and has stayed with me through this piece of work is how it has brought voice to those numbers, to the statistics that it's very easy to become jaded to, to kind of go, yeah, we've seen it all before. But actually having the voice and the lived experience brought out, those quotes are the bit that I know lands the report much more strongly with politicians than any of the numbers. It is the voices, but it's particularly the voices about, and this is what needs to change, that makes a difference. So now that we've come to the end, what we've come to the realisation, it can't stop here. It has to be sustainable. So we're looking at um, building more collaboration with partnerships. We're looking at how we can get more resources and more funding because the work needs to continue. We can't build this community and then just walk away from it.